when we come together, I always like to begin with the words Shechiyanu Vikhivanu Vikhiyanu Lasmanazeh. Thank you, God, for helping us reach this day. But the truth is that it's more appropriate at our banquet celebration that we say the blessing of Hatov Vehametiv. That God, you bring good, not just for myself, but that good is shared with everyone. Our shul, the Calabasas shul, it bridges, it's there for the community. From the shul to our social, from prayers to our programs, from our children's Hebrew school to our Hanukkah celebration at the commons, from our scotch steak and schmooze evenings to what we are proud that just today, we have officially sent out our first registrants for our women's trip to Israel, partnering with the JWRP. In 2002, Howard Schultz, the CEO of Starbucks, and five other major Jewish philanthropists made a trip to Israel. The direction, I believe it was Asia Torah. One of their stops, in this part, perhaps famous, it was in the Times, it was in the Wall Street Journal. One of their stops was to go and meet with your Dustin Svi Finkel of blessed memory, the great dean, the Rosh Hashiva of the Mir Yeshiva, the largest yeshiva in the world. They came, they were brought into his reception area, his dining room, Lined with Svarim, I myself was privileged to meet the great Rosh Hashiva there. And they were not, they sat down, and they waited a few minutes, but they didn't know what Justin Speed. They didn't know that he suffered from Parkinson's, and that he didn't take the medicine that was available at the time because it would impair his thinking. And he didn't want to sacrifice his clarity. Because he was, after all, the Rosh Hashiva to the greatest Yeshiva and some of the greatest students in the world. After about 10 or 12 minutes, Rebdust Svi came in and he walked painfully slow, holding his hand, and finally he made his way to the chair, and he sat down, and all of the men, as Howard Schultz tells us, everybody was looking down. So it must be, he bangs on the table, and he tells them, Look at me. Look at me. I know you are very busy people. You are prominent American businessmen. You have so much to do. I only have a few minutes of your time. They all look. And he asks them, what is the lesson of the Holocaust? And he's waiting for them to reply. So one of them answers, Howard Schultz says, one of them was brave enough to volunteer and says, never forget. 
from that, another one said, we should never again be victims. But Nassim speed, he looks at them and he tells them, you don't get it, guys. He says, I want to tell you the power and the strength of the human spirit. He said, when the Jews were gathered up, they were put into the cattle cars. They were stuffed. Hardly any air, let alone space. And they were traveling two, three, four days without anything. So they finally got to the concentration camp. And then the Nazis with their dogs, they would roll open the door suddenly with blinding lights. And they would rush everybody out. And the men would be separated from the women, fathers from sons, mothers from daughters. Those that were sent to the bunks after they were given their new uniform. So every sixth person was given a blanket. And then, when they went to the bunk to lie down, six to a bunk, the bed, the person that was given the blanket had to make a decision. Was he going to push the blanket to the other five? Or was he going to pull the blanket toward himself so that he should be warm? That was the greatness of the human spirits that those Jews, they were able to push the blanket. He stood up, he said, Take your blanket and go back to America and push your blanket to five other people. Make a difference. They were very shaky. They were moved. That you can read about online. That part is famous. But it's not as famous to follow up to that story. Howard Schultz, a year later, went back to Israel. This time he went back to Reb Nussin Svifinkel. He had a private meeting. It was himself, Reb Nussin Svi, and the secretary of Reb Nussin Svi. And Howard Schultz takes out a checkbook. He signs a blank check. And he hands it to Reb Nussin Svi. He says, Rabbi, please fill it in. Whatever you want. It's yours. Nussin Svi at that point he carried the Mir Yeshiva on his shoulders, despite his debilitating illness. He built it to what is the greatest Yeshiva in the world. At that time, his budget was several million dollars. It was a blank check that had the backing. The sky's the limit. If Nussin Svi asks him, I can write anything, any amount, any amount, to anyone, whatever you want, right now. Takes the check, he writes on it $1,200, he fills in the name, and he hands it back to Howard Schultz, and he tells him, I want you to please take this check. Go across the street. There's a Jewish bookstore directly across from my home. Go inside. Ask for a pair of tefillin. That 
Nussens Fee wants the nicest filling. And I want you to take that filling home with you. And I want you to put it on every day. The Nussens Fee was pushing the blanket. His blanket was the blanket of Judaism. His blanket was the blanket of Torah. And he was not looking what he can get from Howard Schultz, but he was pushing his blanket to Howard Schultz. All of us have to push our blanket. We have to share. We have to share our passion for Judaism. We have to open our Shabbat table beyond friends to neighbors. We have to share the opportunity, the gifts that we have of having the Calabasas Shul in our lives. Invite others, tell others, share with others. But you might tell me, that's just Rebnussin's speak. If you're the greatest rabbi or from the greatest rabbis in the world, you push your blankets. But what about little old me? I want to read for you a letter. It's a letter that came yesterday, I think it was, two days ago. It says on it, Naomi Van. It's a handwritten letter. I actually looked at it closely. It is handwritten. And it says, Dear neighbor. I know it doesn't say how much noise my kids make or any of that. Dear neighbor, when someone talks about the future, how do you feel? Will things get better or worse? And then she writes an entire letter about that she would love to share how she found happiness, how she found meaning. And she signs it, Sincerely, Erin Blaney. I don't know who Erin Blaney is. She's a neighbor in Wilmington. But I thought to myself, when I saw this letter, handwritten, I thought to myself, did I, did I sit there to write a handwritten letter to someone that I don't know? What do you mean if we write a letter to our neighbor saying, I'd love to have you over for a Shabbat dinner? To tell them when you see them, when you're talking to them, you're going to synagogue, come with me. Invite them. Share your passion. It's a gift. You have a blanket. So much, in fact, the vast majority of American jewelry, they need to share our blanket. We're putting it all for ourselves. We need to be willing to write their neighbor letters. We need to share the gift that we are given. We need to learn, not only from a dust and sweet, but less memory. We need to learn from Aaron Blaney of Woodland Hills, California. This week, we're going to read about the menorah. We're going to read the story of Aaron, of Aaron the high priest, lighting the menorah. And the Midrash tells us that God gave this mitzvah specifically to Aaron. Because Aaron felt bad. He was depressed. Each 
one of the tribal leaders, each one of the Nisiyim, they had a special day. They got to bring Karbanot in the inauguration of the tabernacle of the Mishkan. They all had a special day. And Aaron felt bad. He didn't have a special day. His tribe, the Levim, the Kohanim, they didn't have a special day. And Aaron felt bad. So God said, Aaron, I'm going to give you the menorah. You have the menorah to do. But we're left puzzled. What was bothering Aaron? He was the high priest. He was the only one that could go into the Holy of Holies. He's the only one that could bring the incense on Yom Kippur. His family of Kohanim were the only ones that got to serve in the temple. The Levim had their special role unique to them. What was Aaron jealous, so to speak, of? And what was God's appeasement? What was God giving him in the Menorah? So perhaps we can understand it this way. Each of the tribal leaders, the Nisim, they had their special day. The gifts that they brought on that day, starting with the tribe of Yehuda, each day a different leader. Each gift that they gave the Karbalo, the offerings, was a free will offering. There was no requirement to it. They collectively decided on the gifts that they were going to give to God. It was their own. It was a present that they were giving to Hashem. When Aaron saw that, Aaron said, I don't, I don't have that opportunity. I can't give a gift to God. That wasn't in everything that I do is required. It's special, but it's all pre-written. It's all pre-scripted. There's nothing of me, so to speak, in it. It's all direction. So God tells him, I'm going to give you the menorah. Because the menorah has something unique about it. The Manavi says something that the Kohanim here may take exception to. That is that the menorah is not part of the temple service, of the service in the base of English that requires a Kohen. Every person is eligible to light the menorah. Therefore, anyone, when Aaron heard that everybody can light the menorah, it doesn't need him. Then it says in the next verse, Vayas Kain Aaron. He rushed forward because this was something that he could do more than was required. It wasn't following the direction or the command. He was seizing the opportunity. And that is what God was giving the opportunity to Aaron. And that's what Aaron was rushing forward with excitement. He has his chance to give something more to God. Tonight, we recognize those that did more than is required. They stepped forward to see that the gift we call the Calabasas Shul can continue. And I want to thank our platinum sponsors, Julie Freeman, Bob and Brenna Pastor, our silver sponsor, Bernard and Vanessa May.
for stepping forward as we said for more. We want to recognize and thank our high sponsors, Bruce and Susan Beer, <laughs> Keith Brugenthal, <laughs> Jeff and Shelley Cooper, <laughs> Phyllis Franklin, <laughs> Sam and Deloria Fink, Stephen Leslie Kurtz, <laughs> Neil and Paula Lenarski, <laughs> Mark and Tamara Litzman, <laughs> Scott and Billy Witches, <laughs> and I thank my Asia Kyle for as well being a high sponsor. When we talk of doing more, is the more, is the more that expresses itself in leadership. A community, in order to do the work that it does, it needs to have leadership. And I am blessed as the rabbi to have a team the Board of Directors of the Calabasas Shul, that as a partner in partnership with the rabbi, we're able to bring the good that we can to the community. We now transition to Zohar Hashem Meshuvo Hashem. In our board, it is time for us, to each of us, recognize the contributions of our board of directors and here to pause and say thank you. I begin with our president, <laughs> with our president, Steve Kurtz. There's no question that the round of applause as the president of Israel for the President of the United States, it's not easy being the President when everybody is a President. And we all understand that that is the Jewish way in every shul. We want to thank Gabi Mashal. <laughs> of dedicated partnership. We begin just to speak of the rebuild in the shul program, to talk about the Sephardic High Holiday Service, and of course, to add in the beautiful and meaningful Yardside board that he innovated and designed. And then we couple with that with the person who is one of the world's best raffle sellers. We want to thank Joel Simon for his service. was with regard to the youth programming. And for that, he is blessed to have an Asia Schayo <laughs> on, on a, who serves as a co-founder of the JLP, our Hebrew school, its director. Together they make that dynamic duo here for birth. And we're deeply indebted to the both of them. Joel is retiring, but one that we're not letting so fast.
Neil Schwartz. <laughs> Every school needs a Neil. We enjoy his benefits on the board as the secretary, in the minion as the gabai, and perhaps most important, the person who makes the world's best Ronan and Drury. A true builder for our community. From the beautiful taking the shul and raising it to a totally new level. To having a social hall to be doing the floors in the shul itself. And what is perhaps most memorable to myself is when it came time for sukkahs and it was time for a new sukkah. He was there building in the hot sun together. We were building the sukkah to make sure that we have a sukkah for our shul. Jeff Cooper, who is, serves a president emeritus and a member of the board, not only for all of his tremendous contributions to the board itself, but we want to recognize that together with his Aisha Schio Shelley, that they have enabled our community to have the bracha, to have a home where we can go, a home for our shul, a home for our Hebrew school, a home for our simchos. All of us have that gift, but we all share it. And we want to say thank you to the group of families for helping us. I want to ask the five board members to please come forward. Please, if the board members to come forward, please. It's the time to recognize your great service. Presented to Steve Kurtz, President, 2015 to 2017, in recognition of your service and dedication to the Calabasas Shul. Neil Schwartz.
We are blessed. But now, Bezorah Hashemesh, Uvah Hashemesh, that three of the members that are standing on this stage were selected as part of the nomination to lead us and volunteered to stand yet again for election. Recognize Steve Kurtz, recognize Neil Schwartz, recognize Jeff Cooper. And that together, to blend the gift of new and established, a blessing of bringing new talent, we are privileged that Vanessa May, Nancy, <laughs> Nancy Levy, and Ben Roca, their names will appear, got willing on the slate. And Bezrat Hashem, Hashem has taken us to the Shekhiyadu, to our Tova Meitiv that in our celebrating our 23rd year, that God should continue to gift us, that we should be able to push the blanket, not only to pull it for ourselves, but to push it to the entire community, that we should, as a shul, be a community that reaches out and serves as a center for Jewish life for everyone. That's the gift that we have, the gift of the Calabasas Shul. And we want to thank our board of directors for their great contribution to our community. I'm going to ask Julie Freeman, Erin, and Yossi, please come forward. Remember a special individual who was given to our community. And a special wife who stands emulating the path that he set. David Freeman of blessed memory. He was a combination of quiet and compassion, of dedication, but didn't like the limelight. He thought that it would be most fitting that we recognize someone in the community that emulates those character traits, that's carrying heavy weight in our shul, that's there in a quiet way for all of us, and sees that our shul is a home, it's a family, that shares the love and is like a mother figure, a Yiddish imam, if you may. 
and it's very fitting. The person that I would like you to join me in recognizing this evening, in appreciating that which we do, that which she does, is a person that actually worked together with David Freeman. We recognized as an exceptional therapist and even more, a special human being. And it is with great privilege that I invite up to the stage for a special presentation a woman who goes by another name, our special one and only Kiddish lady. He's going to recognize her to be able to do the great work that we do. We need people that are dedicated behind the scenes to see that it happens. And I want to recognize John DeBach,
تحتران تحتران خبیبا Saved my most dear for last I want to recognize my Isha Skayo I want to serve my last school My advice to every young rabbi when they call is that God should bless you, my blessing to them, is that God should bless you that you should have a wife like mine, that no matter how bad the speech is, <laughs> the people are happy. I want to get you my Asian And now, as a family that we are, we come together to celebrate, we come together to say thank you to God for the gift of the Calabasas Shul. We come together to say thank you to our sponsors. We come together and we say thank you to each and every one of you that came out tonight. It's always easier to just sit on the couch and push the remote. Each of you chose to be here tonight. There's so many emails that I got. Please, Rabbi, can you make place? There's so many people that could be here tonight that responded with beautiful notes and are partaking as sponsors or partaking in the raffle. It's so beautiful. It's so heartwarming. It's so special. It's so many people pushing the blankets. Recognizing our board of directors and all of the great work that they have done and that with Hashem's help they will do. Recognizing our Kiddush lady, recognizing Natalie Yeshin for all of her work and recognizing the support team that makes the shul happen. But as a family, we come together to celebrate. And it's only fitting that I ask each of you to join me to sing happy birthday to a special matriarch of our community, to our one and only Rana Pastor. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rana. tonight. We're now going to open the tables. Let's celebrate the night. And tonight you'll have an opportunity at the close of the evening. We'll have the raffle for our winners of our special games. And then of course we will draw the winners of our raffle. Thank you all so much for coming. Baruch Hashem, Baruch HaTov, HaMetiv. And thank you to each and every one of you. Good evening, everybody. Hold my closer. That's better. Okay. There are people that run from the limelight, and there are people that run away from the limelight. The people that run away from the limelight, limelight are actually more deserving of recognition and honor than those. We, got a, we owe a deep amount of gratitude to Rabbi Dan and, and the other two guys. And I have a kind of room and dedication and this thing that we show up with our friends that we're not going to talk about. So let's give recognition to Rabbi Dan and the other two guys. We send a welcome to all of us.